the Racing Post cast in association with Paddy Power. They stream all UK and Irish racing live on your mobile, tablet or PC. Hello there, welcome along. It's Monday, it's the Racing Post Weekend Review Postcast and we've got a great panel. I'm Bruce Millington, Nick Watts is here with me and we've also got on the line Sam Twiston-Davis and over in Ireland we've got Paddy Power from Paddy Power who's got all the latest anti-post betting and hopefully a couple of winners for us. I'm delighted to say that Sam is sounding a lot happier. He's always, he always tries hard to be upbeat but there's a definite spring in his step. Sam, two days to go, how are you feeling? Yeah, can't wait. Really excited. Um, obviously, it's a bit different getting up this Monday. But, um, we look at the entries all of a sudden again, and um, there's a lot to get excited about. So, really excited. I don't know um, if we'll be riding um, like Skibbon and Coppola stuff. At the end of the day, you want the ground to be right, especially when you've got horse like him coming out first time. Um, so, we'll know a bit more tomorrow. But whatever we come back on, I'll be really looking forward to it. Jolly good. And, by the way, not just a great jockey, but a great tipster. Where did you get that one from Saturday? Thank you very much indeed. That, uh, that earned me a few quid. So I wasn't having a great run, actually. Your first two at, at, at Tiff have been very disappointing. So, uh, nicely back on track. He's also, so we think, think quite a bit of, obviously, he's only a four-year-old and um, he got all the allowances. But I just thought with the way Nigel's horse are running, going out to Newcastle in the right kind of race, so hopefully he'd win. So well played. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Sam, we'll stick with you for the big race of the weekend that we're looking back on. It was the Hennessy. Fantastic spectacle as ever. And the favourite, Oblige, Native River. Um, what did you make of his performance, Sam? Yeah, look, he's a very, very strong stare. He jumped really well. He was up near the front end all the way. Um, it was a very brilliant performance. I thought there were a lot of eye touches in there. Um, we got Black Lion travelled and jumped like a, a really smart horse. And, Obviously, had, had, Ryan had jumped off afterwards and he just said he thought he made a bit of a noise, which is quite interesting. So if there's going to be any improvement and keep an eye on him for the future. But yeah, I love the way Nathan River really went about it. Um, he travelled um, actually a little bit better than usual. Although he's off the bridle five down. You've seen him off the bridle down the back before. So it's a very brave performance and it, you know, I was quite impressed. What could he go on to achieve, do you think, Sam? I think uh, the likes of, you could look at a Gold Cup and things like that, but especially with Thistle Crack around and Few Card, those horses with a bit of pace, he might just get caught out. So I guess Grand Nationals and stuff are an option. Um, obviously, he's have a lot of weight in what he's achieved in, in his very relatively short career so far. Um, but look, he's a very brave horse. He seems to jump well. I don't see any reason why that there aren't plenty of options for him, especially in some of those big races over in Ireland, maybe a bit softer ground. Excellent stuff, Sam. Thank you very much. Nick, what was your main take-out from uh, watching the Hennessy? It was a terrific race. And by the way, what a great weekend it was. I, mean, I, th I did my money on Saturday, but I, I sat back at the end of it all after the final race. I thought, what a great show everyone has put on. The horses, the trainers, the grooms, and the jockeys as well. It was absolutely a brilliant, brilliant day, but Native River was the star of the day for sure. Yeah, he was fantastic. And as Sam alluded to, he, he travelled better than he, he, he sometimes does. He can hit a flat spot in his races, and I thought that might, you know, find him out. But um, he got into a really good rhythm, um, and he jumped very well as well. And, and you know, from two out, he's, we know he's a strong stay because he's second in a four-miler last season. Um, the interesting thing for me is just listening to what Sam said about black line, because if you'd stop the race turning in, I was pretty sure I was on the winner and, and, and Nigel was going to have his second Hennessy winner because he, he was in the perfect position. He was in third. He only had two in front of him, Double Ross and, and Native River. And the one thing that black line normally does is his strongest part of his race is the last part of the race. Um, and he's normally very, very strong, close home. Um, so it's interesting to see what Sam said, because he did seem to hang a little bit in the closing stages and he didn't finish like I thought he would. He, he looked so he was at least nailed on for the frame and has even done for that. And I think he finished fifth in the end. So wouldn't be surprised if there was something just not quite quite right with Black Line in the closing stages there. But the way he jumped, the way he travelled, I certainly wouldn't give up on him. Sam, when you say made a noise, a noise like I need a wind up or yeah, a noise like so. swallowed a bit it's, of mud or something? It's something like he hasn't done before. Um, so what he'll do, he'll go down to Ben Brain's um, for basically, it's a, it's a galloping scope, so they have a look down his throat while he's um, exercising to see what's happening. Um, and if he needs his palate blend, it's just it's a simple operation. He won't to miss too much time at all. Um, he is a case star. Some some of them do um, make a noise. Obviously, is, is anything you're always is trying to inspire to improve a few pounds here and there. And if that is an issue, then looking forward, hopefully, there's more improvement to come. Okay, and. Uh... Back to you, Watsy, for Native River. When we go back, when we when we get to the end of next April, what are we going to look back and say Native River achieved this season? 
Uh, well, what can you do from here? I, it's just going to be interesting which way they go. Will they go for a grand national campaign or would they chuck him into the gold cup with a pistol crack and cue card as well? I think they might be tempted to in, into a gold cup run um, because he's going to go up for this. He's off 155 at the weekend. He's going to go the up. The cat's out of the bag now, isn't it? You might as well. Yeah, I, I, I think they're quite right to aim for gold with him. Um, you know, he's a strong stayer. Stayers win the Gold Cup. He, he's a, you know, he's tra he showed in the Hennessy that he can travel well or, or better at times than he did last season. So maybe he's maturing at the same time. But just one point of interest, if um, if you fancy him as a Gold Cup outsider, then surely you need to look at Minella Rocco as well, who beat him very easily in the four-miler last season. That's the novice race from last year that everyone's talking about, that the form's really worked out. He ran well on his comeback at um, at Cheltenham recently. He could be a synchronised kind of horse that, that uh, proves very good. You think he's just going to be a stare in a Grand National horse, but proves much better than that. I think Paul Keeley was spraying up the possibility of, um, of that one being a decent outsider. I think he's seventh favourite for the Gold Cup now, Paddy, isn't he? Give us the latest show from Paddy Power on the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Yeah, well, the Tissa cracks the favourite. He's eleven to four. Then you got six to one Q card, nine to one Coney Gree, ten Don Cossack and Jack Adam. You got twelve Valzerito, Native Rivers into sixteens. And What's Manella Rocco? Manella Rocco, yeah, funny. He stole my thunder. That was gonna, that was gonna be my sneaky one. Uh, he's thirty three is Manella Rocco, so still a big price. Have you, have you backed him, Paddy? No, but I was thinking about doing. I know we're gonna go on to the beach later on. I was thinking about trying to use that four miler form and do one of these kind of it's not really related but it should be related bets oh, okay. so if you backed like Vicont and Noye and some ridiculous each way double with Manella Rocco for the Gold Cup and all this kind of stuff and Ooh. try and just we'll, back we'll, that form line we'll I mean? come to that bit of dirty each way thievery yeah. later on um, how bad a result was it for you Native River I guess um, 72 Fav winning Hennessy is never good for the bookies is it yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But look, do you know what? We wouldn't feel any sympathy for us whatsoever. We deserve to. I actually, I genuinely believe that everything I'm t talking rubbish. But I think we make enough money during the year that on the big days, the big festivals, it's good. It's a good time to have your pants taken down because it gives, gives people a, you know, a winner when you need it most, you know. You're so big hearted. I don't believe yeah. a word of it. You <laughs> absolute mercenary. You would you'd nick every penny out of our punting pockets that you could. Um, so don't give us all that. Let's talk about Thistle Crack. Sam. What did you make of Thistlecrack? And I want to ask you this. We all know he's obviously fast on the flat, but his jumping's coming together now, isn't it? Yeah, it looked a lot more um, assured. He took a little bit to his stride, a stride to his right when he needed to, which is no, no bad thing at all. Um, he was very good at the ditches. He was brave when he needed to be. But more importantly, he was very clever. Um, so he's looking to come more and more the finished article all the time. I don't know if there's a more exciting horse in training at the minute. I don't think there is. Um, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Newbury is a jumping test. How exacting is that? Yeah, good test. Decent size of fence. Um, you need something to jump really well. You need to be accurate. You don't want to waste too much time in the air. And obviously, his opposition is going to get stronger as he goes forward. But at the same time, is there also going to be able to get him off the rider? Well, that's a very good question. And the other thing is, presumably he's going to have... If he does go for the Gold Cup, what would he have? Another probably two runs? He'll, he'll, he'll have something at Christmas at Kempton, either King George or Feltham, and then maybe one more. Will that be enough to get him ready for the hurly-burly of the Gold Cup? That is the question, because um, if he runs in the Feltham, um, he's going to take on novices, and I don't know if there's going to be one that's going to be good enough to get him get him racing, get him, obviously, um, out of his comfort zone. And I'm not really sure what they're running after that, you know? at the end of the day the, the biggest test of all is going to be the Gold Cup where he's running against real Gold Cup contenders which are going to make him have to go forward and, and race a pace maybe he hasn't before but it's one of those things he's done loads and loads of schooling he's very assured um, on on Friday so I think by the time the Gold Cup comes hopefully it'll be the finished article So come on and give me a, give me a prediction will he go for gold or will they take the novice route with him do you think? I think he'd, he'd, he'd I imagine he'd go into Felton and then go on to the Gold Cup Okay. Um, like you say, it's a great one, Felton, and it's well worth a race, well worth winning. Absolutely, um, Nick. I suppose age is a consideration here as well, isn't it? I mean, he's no spring chicken, is he? No, no, he's he's, he's quite late to come to the novice ranks, really. So you know, they've got a small window of opportunity when they can really go for this while he's at his peak. There's no point waiting until he's ten, is there, and pitching him at the Gold Cup, surely? I suppose you can still be competitive at 10, but you're on the cusp of when, when you might be starting to edge on, onto the downgrade, maybe. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll go for it this year, as long as the Feltham goes well, which I'm sure it will, because opposition uh, to him seems to melt away in these novice races. So I'm sure that'll be a nice school round for him. I'd just be interested to see if if they could get a couple of runs into him 
early next year, maybe the Cotswold Chase at Cheltenham on the trials day, and maybe the Denman Chase at Newbury, which Coney Gree used uh, in his year before he ran at Cheltenham. Um, that might give him a more a, a bigger test against more experienced horses, and then then we can see where where we are. But I can see him sailing through his next two or three races, and and if he does that, then I, I think they've got to go for gold. And where will he finish in the Gold Cup if he runs in it? Well, I put up Jack Adam a few uh, you know a few a few months ago. Um, so I've kind of nailed my colours to his no, mask. No, 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 um, here and now. Never mind what you tipped ages ago. What do you think will happen now? It doesn't matter what you tipped in the past. I still, I, I still have a, a slight feeling about Thistlecrack that he's always in such a hurry to do things and, and you just wonder if, if he can just rein back a little bit. I think he, he's certainly got the ability to win a Gold Cup, but I just worry about him sometimes. He's just in such a hurry to get on with it and... He's just so exuberant that he might just misjudge one of these ditches one day and it, it, it might do for him. But, um, you know, that, that that's just a gut feeling in okay. the back of my mind. Sam, where would you have uh, Thistlecrack finishing if he lines up in the Gold Cup next year? I think it's going to be um, a massive test. But at the same time, the way he's uh, um, adjusted himself now uh, as second start of offences, I think by the time he's got to the Gold Cup, look, it's going to be a massive test. The fence at the top of the hill is notoriously tricky. I think by then it'll it, it, it be very sure-footed and um, you know, it'll have the experience he needs. I mean, they won't leave any stone on time going for a Gold Cup, that's for sure. So a potential winner for sure? I think so. OK, and Paddy, what about you? What's your view of Thistle Crack? <clears throat> yeah, I think potential winner, definitely. I think, in, uh, in fact, the most likely winner probably because of a bit of potential. I just think this Gold Cup is not like a Coro Star vintage kind of Gold Cup and Thistle Crack could be the one that's just classier than anything else. And I think that's why something like Manella Rocco or Native River or some of that could easily get get involved in this or get involved in the places shortly because I don't think they're going to travel at that ridiculously fast pace and keep it going that some of the classier Gold Cups have, have had. So, so far at the moment, I just don't think it looks the classiest Gold Cup ever. Wait till Duvan gets entered into it. That would make things a little bit interesting, wouldn't it? And what price are you now, Colin Tizard, for the Trainers' Championship, Sam? Oh, not hey. Sam. You're not a bookmaker. You're a jockey. <laughs> Paddy. <laughs> well, he was, while he was off, maybe he had a little sideline going on. Um, yeah, but he's four to one now. I have to say, I think... <laughs> You know, he maybe have a chance of backing him to finish second. I think it's going to be difficult for him. I think there's just too many handicaps and too many big races that he doesn't have the firepower that the Nichols stable has. And if Willie starts sending a load of horses over, um, then it might make it more difficult for him again. So it'll be shared around a bit. But he's going to be there or thereabouts, but I don't think, I don't think he'll win it. Sam, is the view from the Nichols camp that Colin Tizard is now the man to beat rather than Willie Mullins? I'm, I'm not really sure it's how they look at it, you know. I think the way Paul judges it is he just does the best for each every single horse in, um, in the yard. So obviously he tries to win as many big races as possible. But the horses are running in the races they deserve to be running in, not so much to try and get prize money for the championship. Um, he's champion trainer because he, he places his horses very well and he does the best for every single horse in that yard. And you, you're saying he hasn't had a look at the train, trainers' championship standings yet, Sam? <laughs> is that what you're trying to tell me? He's, he's an animal, you know. He's always, uh, if you look at Irving, um, how many times he won first time out, the coming grade ones he's bagged now. Um, I think that is a massive achievement. And thinking while he keeps bang banging in these Saturday winners, he, he's always going to be hard to beat, isn't he? He certainly is. Uh, I mean, Nichols is just the genius, isn't he, Nick, at playing the, the programme book and getting the best out of every single horse and placing them so brilliantly. Can you see him being dethroned this year? Uh, certainly not by Colin Tizard, I don't think, um, for the reasons that Paddy already mentioned. He's, he's very strong in one division, but maybe not all of the divisions. Um, it was really interesting. Tom Seagal wrote a really good piece on Colin Tizard last week in, in the in the weekender, and he suggested that um, Joe Tizard might have a lot to do with this now because Nichols' his former assistants, Dan Skelton and Harry Fry, are doing really well. Joe Tizard was stable jockey there, I think, for some time ago now, but he obviously would have learnt a lot from Nichols. He's now in the fold with Colin, and they're getting all the success. So it could be a, another backhanded compliment for Paul Nichols. Although it was interesting, wasn't it, on Channel 4 when, um, when Colin Tizard was asked about Joe's influence. And he actually said uh, that he, he actually praised his daughter as much as, as he did with Joe. Did, did, you were on duty, Sam, weren't you? Were you broadcasting Saturday? Yeah. Remember that? When it, I, I can't remember yeah. what the daughter's name is, but he was very quick to, to shower her with praise. So... Um, big family effort isn't it I mean they all work very very hard I used to ride out there a long long time ago but I remember that Joe would be getting up and milking the cows as, as, as would Colin you know it's a massive family effort and um, like you say you, you know, it's always nice to see him having winners because um, I mean it's why a lot of people fall in love with the game is obviously the, these families running, running horses like that and you can really see the passion involved. And when you were riding out there all those years ago Sam did you ever expect that they would be elevated to the, the, the level that they are now? 
If I'd have known, I'd offered to milk the cows. <laughs> Have you ever milked a cow, Nick? You've got a, you own cows, don't you? I, I've delivered a calf before. Have but, you yeah. delivered? Never mind yeah. milked. Yeah. Blimey, O'Reilly. Good grief. Right. What else did we like at Newbury Friday or Saturday? Let's have a word about you know what I mean and his world hurdle chances because Paddy, I presume he has come springing down in that market and he's near enough. Think third fav, isn't he? Yeah, he's just just getting there. I'll try and get up here in front of me. I thought he was impressive, but in that race as well, I thought. Um, What's he called? Snow Falcon, I thought, was uh, was going pretty well. Going well, he wasn't down. he, when yeah, he slid yeah. so, to the ground? Yeah, no, it backed, you know what I mean, Harry. And the fact that he was he was um, backed in from he was 6 to 1 in the morning into 7 to 2 kind of says plenty about his chance. But he's second favourite now, joint second favourite with Nicholas Canyon behind Fahin. Fahin's 5 to 2. And you know what I mean, Harry, and Nicholas Canyon are about 6 to 1 and 8 to 1 Yamworth and Vroom, Vroom, Vroom Mag. And actually, if you look at it from that perspective, you'd say Fahin, OK, possibly he's going this route. We don't know for sure yet. Uh, Yamworth don't know for sure yet. Vroom, Vroom Mag don't know for sure. She could jump fence she could run in the five she could run in any like, race yeah. uh, and at the festival and probably yeah. any other meeting so so if at you least you know what i mean for this, he's yeah. going to run in it isn't he <laughs> yeah. exactly what did you make of him sam you know what i mean harry because i mean i think a few people have been raising the odd eyebrow over the uh, validity of the albert bartlett form last year but that was decent wasn't it yeah i was very impressed he looked obviously um to come out of this summer break really well um we fancied um, Bally opted it quite strongly. Thought he'd have gone well, especially with the, the, the real good gallop they'd gone. And he brushed them aside cosily, you know. So obviously brushed, bumped into a very, very good horse. We weren't too disappointed. So I think obviously looking forward, he looks to have, have, have a strong chance in the world early. Absolutely, Nick. You know what I mean, Harry? Is he a contender, or does it really all depend who lines up against him on the day? Yeah, he is a contender. I'd, I'd agree, Parry, uh, Paddy. I'd love to have seen what uh, would happen if Snow Falcon had stood up because he was going very well at the time. That took a lot of interest out of the race for me. Um, and gave him quite a, you know, a comfortable margin of victory. But, you know, all, all, all the talk is that JP's got a big duo now with you, Naughty, me, Harry and Yanworth, but they're forgetting about Jeski. Eight-time grade one winner, 14 to one. I think the world hurdle is the target and he's back at Leopardstown at Christmas. I'd say he's better than, you know what I mean, Harry and Yanworth if he's back to his best. You, don't, you do go a little bit Frank Bruno when you say that, don't you? It's taking <laughs> me back to the 80s. I feel like Harry Carpenter with you, Sam. <laughs> Before your time, Sam, don't worry about it. Sam, talk to me about Clan Des Obo. Which race will yeah. he run in at the festival? I'm not really sure. He's going to have plenty of options. Um, he jumped really nicely, looked very sure footed. Um, it was great to see him obviously improve from his run at Chester. It was a pleasing run. Um, but he just took a bit of a blow that day, so it was great to see what he can do. Um, looking forward to St. Paul and earmarked a few races, but. I think the main thing was, was just the way he beat a decent, beat decent opposition. What would you think? Maybe JLT, or is it way too early for him at this stage? I, I think it's, it's one of those you'll explore a different variation of trips and tracks and see how he gets on. At the end of the day, he's a four-year-old, so um, the more he does, the more he's going to learn. And come Cheltenham, you have more, more kind of idea what kind of race is going to suit him and which one might not so much. Excellent stuff. OK, let's look at Newcastle in just a mo. Here's Paddy Power's latest horse racing offer. It's money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second to the SP5 in all races at one meeting today and at one meeting every day this month. Max £25 per race. Not available in shops. 18 plus. Gambleaware.co.uk The fighting fifth was the highlight of the Newcastle card and so it proved an absolutely thrilling outcome. One that I didn't expect. I've got to say, I didn't think Irving could come back and do that. But again, as we were saying, you write off Paul Nichols at your peril. Were you expecting that from Irving, Sam? You can't write off his record, it, it was the thing really, because he got an exceptional record for us time out. Um, I think it is when he's fresh and well, um, he has a very, very strong record. Um, I think it, that's just any time I wrote him that he, he didn't win and he fell at the last when he probably would have won. Um, so it was one of those, he, he is just a very, very, on its first time out, he's, he's, a, he's a good horse and he's well capable of putting in a performance like that. Obviously, it would have been interesting um, if the Henry de Brom horse had stood up. Um, Apple's Jay got a little bit hampered, but even so, as, it was, as long as all horses were okay, it was actually a strong race, a good race to watch. Yeah, absolutely was. Nick, what did you make of that race? Uh, both in terms of, uh, I guess, Irvin will go to Win Canton or somewhere next, will he? And then, um, and then we'll see what, how his season transpires. Apple's Jay, obviously, very interesting. There's a, a mounting theory she needs a trip. Yeah, Apple's Jade was the interesting horse for me, definitely, because, yeah, she got beaten on her debut, but. Um, this was the time to judge her because she had to run under her belt. And to me, she just looks nothing like the horse she looked in the spring where she won at Aintree and punched us down so well. I couldn't really understand the tactics with her. I mean, Elliot said before the race uh, and, and after her last defeat that she looked a bit slow, might need a trip. So surely you have to go on over two miles and make it a test. 
Um, she wasn't. She was held up in behind horses. And she I almost didn't really seemed to get a little her. bit tapped for toe, to use one of my favourite cliches, you know, just entering the straight, didn't she? And then obviously, as Sam says, got a little bit hampered by the faller. Yeah, but I wouldn't. She still had ample time to to get past Irving. I think on the running, didn't quite do it, which was again disappointing. But I just thought the tactics were all wrong. She should have gone out. She should have made all and really made it a strong test. And I didn't really get that. But whichever way you look at it, she's not the horse that she she looked in the spring. Perhaps she is just a spring mare. I think Paul Keeley made that point that that could could be the case with her. Paddy, what have you got uh, Apple's Jade priced up for? I suppose a variety of. Ways. I guess she enters the mare's reckoning now, doesn't she? Yeah, it's a weird one because I, I tend to agree she might just be a spring horse. But, I mean, if she was mine, um, I think I'd probably keep her a few miles. If you look at the champion hurdle, like, seek your name five runners, runners, let alone the winner. Like, Annie Parrell run, Fahin might and Jork Hill might and Vroom Vroom might. You say Annie Parrell run. I mean, she, you know, oh, sorry, she's presumed she's okay. Back, I mean, oh. Yeah, but this, this is this list of betting. Annie Parrell, Fahin, York, York Hill, Vroom Vroom Mag, Yamworth, Altior, Nichols Canyon. None of those are guaranteed to run. That's the first seven no, of the No, I know. I mean? it's, a, so, it's a really weird yeah, it's race. It's a weird that, race. Isn't it? Totally weird. Yeah, you know, it's it. every chance she'll turn up uh, without a prep as well, Annie Power, which would add yeah. further intrigue to exactly. it. Exactly. One of those ones where she should she'll either, she'll either 10 to 1 or 1 to 10. But um, she's uh, 33 is Apple Jade anyway for the, the champion hurdle. Let's have a look at the mayor's hurdle now if I can find it. Just a quick one uh, while you're looking at that. Sam, yeah. I want to ask you about Yamworth because a lot of people are saying, well, you know, what does he do? He's kind of he's one of these horses, and I wrote about in my column last week that, that needs a championship race over two and a half miles, isn't he? Really, rather like the new one, I think, as some people would say. With Yamworth, do you, do you step up to three for the for the world hurdle, or do you think, well, look, actually, we've got a fantastic chance of at least finishing second in a weakish looking champion hurdle? What do you do with Yamworth? Yeah, I think you, obviously the, the nice thing is they've lots of time on their hands. Um, they can try a different variations of things and see what suits them um, for the horse going forward. And today, Neptune um, winners, uh, horses run well in the Neptune, sorry, have good records dropping back in trip um, down to the champion hurdle. But at the same time, he looked he looked like he, he could gallop all day long at Ascot. So he's a horse that's very interesting anyway. Absolutely. Got anything for the mares for Apple's Jade, Paddy? Yes, yeah, seven to two. She is second favourite behind Vroom Vroom Mag again, who may or may not run. And Annie Power is next best of it. It's, it's all over the shop, to be honest. What do you, where do you think Apple's Jade will run, Nick? I think she might go down the mare's route now. I think Elliot's fairly sold on that, that she's she's not good enough over two miles. So I mean, yeah. if she is a spring, uh, if she has a preference for spring, then that seven to two could become interesting. I mean, Vroom Vroom, as we've said, could run in any number of races, couldn't she? I think she might run in Ryanair. Where do you think Vroom Vroom will run, Nick? I think she might go in the mayor's hurdle, and I, I think, it, in a kind of weird way, it, it'd be a shame to lose Apple's Jade from the champion hurdle because it looks a bit of a mess at the moment. But I think the mayor's division is in need of a kind of a boost. We need a competitive race. We, you know, it's great to have seen Cuvée. I'll tell you what we years, need we, is we what we need is contest. not to have a mayor's hurdle. Just give them the allowance and let them run against the uh, the boys as well. But anyway, that's not going to happen. The trend is going the other way to more and more mayors, which isn't brilliant. Uh, Gordon Elliott, Paddy. Now then, six winners at Navin on Sunday. That took some doing, didn't it? That was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, one of my, my favourite pictures of the weekend that you won't have seen. It's in this morning, the front page this morning's Irish Times, like on the front, like the front page would say, uh, pointing towards a splash in about Gordon Elliott saying Gordon Elliott hits them for six at um, at Navin, and he's standing there with seven fingers up. It's oh, he's great. got seven yeah. up, has he? I think <laughs> yeah, we managed exactly. to organise him for six for our front <laughs> yeah, page. You go. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> but um, uh, he's yeah, it was to be fair, it was a great performance. Now he threw plenty of darts at it, didn't he? We were talking about how he uh, how he wanted to win the Troy Town, and to be fair, he got there in the end, not with a gig or with, with that. Sorry, with the Gigginstown one, yeah, but he, um, uh, yeah, he, it, it was a great performance. Men, the one to three shots, the only one, he, the only race he didn't win, so it was a great performance. He's, he's shortened into, uh, I think he's six to four now for the trainers. Willie's two to five, so that's quite five, an interesting four, battle. Yeah. That'll be, won't it? Could be, yeah, mm. definitely could be, yeah. Okay, um, let's talk about Min. Sam, did you watch Min win his first chase? Yes, it was very impressive. He jumped, jumped nicely. Like you say, he looked, looked very short. He's decent, isn't he? And that Arkle is boiling up into a half-decent race already, isn't it? Particularly with Altior resisting the second season over hurdles. That's it. There's already a lot to get excited about, and we're in the early point in the season. Um, you're going to see more and more horses and contenders come out, but we've seen two very strong ones so far. Yeah, and Identity Thief as well. We didn't see much of him because it was so foggy the other week, but... Uh, He's another one who'd enter the equation, wouldn't you think? Who would you most like, if they ran the Arkle tomorrow and all the short ones are, were in there, uh, who would you most like to ride, do you think, Sam? I think Aliator, he looked, looked to jump really nicely. Obviously, 
Um, he had a very, very his, his chase debut couldn't have gone much smoother. Um, he won it very, very cosy. There's going to be bigger tests ahead. At the end of the day, he's got some of the strongest form, obviously, from the last year's Supreme. Absolutely. Uh, would you have an early view on the arc or Nick? Yeah, I mean, as, as good as Min looked yesterday, and he did look good, you've got to think back to Chelton last year and Altior absolutely ran all over him and, and looked equally as good at Kempton last Monday. So I'd, I'd, I'd be with the favourite, definitely. And how do we bet now, Paddy? Very much the way they're talking there. It's uh, uh, Min's twice surprised. Altior's 2 to 1, Min's 4 to 1, and Identity Thieves 8 to 1. Well, the only thing I'd say in maybe that could end up in Min's favour, well, Altior is almost certainly going to get to Cheltenham unbeaten. Min will have probably a sterner test, so he'll have a better test for his credentials over fences by the time they get there. But I think to Nick's point, I mean, last year, Altior proved his superiority. So you'd be with the fab, would you, Pat? I think so, yeah. OK, anything else? Give me one other horse that you thought that's interesting that ran over the weekend. Nick Watts, we'll start with you. Bells Hill made a winning chase debut on Saturday. Now, we couldn't see much of it because it's very foggy, but the comments from Ruby and Willie afterwards were very, very enthusiastic. Uh, looks like he could go to the top and looks a really good prospect. OK, Sam? Well, um... Oh, let me ask you about let me ask you about Bristol Demai, Sam, because he. Just, mm. I mean, did they make too much of him? Did he just run out of petrol? What's his future? What's his best trip now? It was one of those races where obviously that first time out was very very disappointing, um, so it was one of those you wanted to see a bit more. He jumped really nicely. Dealt with obviously loves that kind of ground. I think it's one of those. I think this is softer the ground over two and a half miles where he can really free wheel and jump. Um, he's a horse that's capable of winning a big race. Um, but it's just maybe he's just going to be stuck between that top-notch handicapper and just that little bit short of a Grade One horse. So where might, at this early stage, and we won't hold it, hold you to it. Where might, what might his festival engagement be based on what we know about him now after Saturday? I think it, it, the Ryanair. You know, it'd be one of one of those kind of horses. Um, if the ground came up soft, his chance would be stronger again. Um, at the same time, you know, I'd love to see him maybe pop it over to Ireland and some of those really deep grounds. Um, grade ones, or two, whether it be two and a half, or even even trying even three, because at the end of the day, he just did, does deal with, with soft, heavy ground very, very well. And he's only a kid still, isn't he? So there's, you know, you'd hope there might be a bit of scope as well to get better. Exactly, that's the thing. And these horses, like time is everything. That the further they go through the careers, and the bigger, stronger it'll get, and the more racing it'll find things easier. So um, in the end of the day, he's a very, very good horse. We're lucky to have him, but um, it's just. Sometimes these horses can be hard to place. Yeah, I'm still a massive Bristol Demai fan. Ever since I saw him win that on Welsh National Day at Chepstow, the juvenile hurdle, I just think he's an absolute machine. I hope he goes on to fulfil his potential. Paddy, who have you got for us that the uh, listeners should put in their Racing Post horse tracker? I've got three of them. Go on, so, go on then. Yeah, Death Duty won yesterday at Nav. A very impressive. Could be Albert Bartlett bound. Um, there's 10 to 1 around. We're only 6 to 1, but there's 10 to 1 around. I think that's that's a big price. Not that I'd ever suggest you bet anywhere else. Uh, and then um, Jenkins, I thought, was pretty awesome, considering how badly he jumped, but still kind of hacked up. So I think this, his jumping obviously can improve, and that's great. There's a room for improvement there, so we can get better. So I think Supreme Novice bound, probably. And one that's re really interesting is uh, La Baga Roa seems to be improving at rate of knots, and if she's mares Novice hurdle bound, um, there's nothing else at the moment that should be up again. So, but uh, the three of them I thought were particularly impressive. OK, let's have a quick chat with Sam and Mo about the comeback. Here's Paddy Power's latest horse racing offer. It's money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second to the SP5 in all races at one meeting today and at one meeting every day this month. Max £25 per race. Not available in shops. 18 plus. Gambleaware.co.uk Welcome back. It's Bruce Millington. Nick Watts, Sam Twiston Davis, and Paddy Powers, Paddy Power. Sam, great to have you back on Wednesday. It's definitely happening, isn't it? There's no last minute hitches or certificates no, you need or anything, no? No, no, all happy. Um, we've got the go ahead um, last week um, for next Wednesday, so we're all in the clear. Just have to, I don't know, maybe do a few press ups or something in front of the doctor when I get to the races on Wednesday. How many press ups um, can you do? Oh, quite a few now. I'm a lot fitter than I was before the injury, anyway, that's for sure. Can you beat Jim um, Bolger in a press up contest? No, I think so. Really? You, I'd be careful with that. Apparently, Jim Bolger once, I think he had two members of the, was it, I think it was an Irish rugby team came down. He took okay. them on on press-ups and uh, they, they absolutely wiped the floor with them. So, uh, right, okay. I, honestly, well, to, to, don't, don't get him. Research as, as to what he can do, but yeah, I'm very lucky. Those jockeys now, we get a lot of support. And, um, from the Indoor Jockey Fund to Oaksy House to Jack Barry House up north, we get very, very looked after. Um, we, they make sure we're good and fit and there's a great team down there and, 
with Mike today, doing the last little, little bits, bits and pieces. And um, honestly, I can't can't be complimentary enough of all the team down there. And presumably, you'd urge everyone to go out and make sure their Christmas cards are injured jockeys fun ones. Yes. Honestly, it's a great charity. They do a lot for us. And, how much um, harder would your How much harder would your comeback have been without Oaks having Oaksy House on the doorstep? Well, I'm the, I, in my career, I've been very lucky. I, I've, I've somehow managed to avoid injury. Touch wood. But it's one of those, I wouldn't know, have known what to do, what process to take, what steps to take. So to go down there, it's effectively like having someone help you through it all, you know, from the actual mental side of seeing all these horses come out and win to actually stepping foot in the gym from day one, not doing too much, but to build it up to a stage where you're working really hard um, and getting back to, to your general fitness. I can't emphasize enough. It's not just the actual fitness sides that they help you with. It's they sit down, you can talk to them when horses are winning and you're, you're a little bit you're, you're three weeks down and you've still got a month to go from the back of Cheltenham I was very very I, I was in a funny kind of place as I really put my heart and soul into getting back to Cheltenham so when I wasn't there and was told I need another two weeks I was quite down so it was one of those they really helped me through it and now seeing the light at the end of the tunnel I can't really say thank you enough to them all Excellent good stuff okay so let's look ahead then how many horses are you going to be riding at Foss last do you think on Wednesday? Um, I'm coming back, look, uh, uh, it's, it's one of those now, so I'm coming back from seven weeks. There's a lot of big races coming up. Um, as, as, as me and Paul really chat this morning, I said, Paul, look, I totally understand. If you want me to go to Chepstow on the weekend, then that's totally fine. And, but at the end of the day, hopefully, let, have, we might have a go in Maracuja. Um, runs in uh, Henry VIII. Um, he's, very, he's really free going, loves his jumping. Um, but look, Fossless, sorry, i the point there. Um, just to play, you have two or three rides. We've got a nice horse in called Give Me a Copper. But as I said earlier, he just needs everything to be right because he was an expensive purchase from entry. And with these horses, you don't want to take any risks. And which bit of you will hurt the most after your comeback ride? Hopefully none of it. Um, I've been absolutely hammered in the gym. Um, I'm very fit, but that race riding is a totally different aspect of fitness again. Um, so I imagine it would just be the, the actual um, the legs are, I would be disappointed if the legs went it's more just the, the actual anaerobic experience from the back of the last it's always going to be the catch out but you'd, luckily from a jockey's point of view you don't really feel, feel that far afterwards and, I, and if you if you go on one of those equisizers and, and can you kind of recreate the, the demands of say two, two and a half miles on one of those or is there nothing yeah. like the real thing you may laugh um, when I tell you this but I rode in the champion uh, the article um, within 30 seconds each other the other day so I can tell you that not lucky on, on that fitness anyway Blimey so. that sounds interesting we're, I think we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to follow Sam when he's come back and no, <laughs> word, no word from Paul yet on whether you're going to be Sandown or Chepstow at the weekend yet, No right? look it, it's one of those we sat down in the office this morning I understand being, being champion trainer there's a lot of pressure on him um, so as I said um, I said look boy, I totally understand I don't mind going to a few of the smaller meetings for, for a few weeks till people can see I'm back I'm fit I'm well capable. Um, I think it's one of those. It, it's a lot of pressure to come back and jump back straight into a grade one. But at the same time, in myself, I feel absolutely brilliant. I, my fitness is great. My health, my weight is good. Um, so really, I just can't wait to get back. Whether it be Shepstow, Sandown, I promise you, just to be back is, is the main thing. I'm very excited. So are we. We look forward to it and hope it goes well. Big race of the weekend. <clears throat> Tingle. <coughs> Race of the weekend, the Tingle Creek. Have we got any betting yet, Paddy? It's a bit of a disjointed market, this one, isn't it? Because I don't really know who's running. Yeah, we do. It's a bit all over the shop. But with the way the the, there's no, the weather's forecast good, isn't it? Over your neck of the woods. Yes, it not is. Much yeah. Rain. yeah, no, it'd be nice. Yeah. I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm going over myself, which would be great. Uh, so at the moment, we have Armad as 15 to 8 favourite, Undeso as 9 to 4, Sire de Grugy 9 to 2, Duvan 5 to 1, Special Tiara 13 to 2. God's own fourteen to one, and you can pick your pick the rest of them yourself. But I think um, I don't know. I'd love to know if Special Terror is running because I think on the good ground. Remember, it was last year Special Terror at Sorry to Grudge had the kind of contr uh, the controversial kind of finish. Is that right? Was that last year? Yes. 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 So I think um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like maybe like Special Tiara if the ground is is good and and they're definitely running. Because Armad will be first from the season, under so the same. So it might be question marks about them. Sam, would you have a view on who might win at this stage? Like I say, it's hard to know who's going to run, never mind win. That's the thing. It's, it's hard to know what's going to happen, but in the ideal situation, you, you like, the likes of Undersea turning up with our mad, uh, both free going, love, obviously like it up in front of super jumpers. Um, it could set out to be a great race. I think Sider Gruji was really, really impressive the other day. And if they do go that, that really strong gallop, I could, I could see him being a closer, you know? So 
he like say so he could sit in the likes of in behind special TR and such and um, the way he jumps and travelled around in what was com- a competitive handicap the other day, I think it'd be foolish to write him off at this stage. What so have you got a strong view at this early juncture? Not massively. I think if Ahmad ran, I'd be interested in him because he had such a good record at Sandown last season, won twice, and he beat Bristol to May 10 lengths in a grade one there. So he's, he's got very good form. But tactics are going to be interesting if him and Special Tiara do take each other on. It could could leave, leave a closer uh, to, to come and pip them both. But uh, they'll have to be careful for that. OK, so Gary Moore, obviously an absolutely crucial figure in the makeup of the race. Let's hear what he had to say about his Tingle Creek prospects. Side of Gruzy would probably be a slightly better workhorse. Um, he'd have a little bit more speed. I think if you ran the two of them over two and a half miles, our man would kill him. But um, over two miles, you know, like Side of Gruzy's always had that little bit more class. You know, he was a 140 odd hurdler, which obviously he's been a better horse over fences. But um, you know, like he, um, our man wouldn't have been that class over hurdles. Is his, his jumping and since he's gone chasing. But then you don't know how much he'll if he improves like he did from four to five, to five to six. You know, if he improves like that again, you know, then it, it could be anything. I think there's actually still a, a whisper that Ahmad might run in the Peterborough chase on Sunday. Nick, you're a man of, uh, you're a, a son of the soil, aren't you? Which bird was that in the background chirping away? Are you good on your bird song? I'm getting better, Bruce. Uh, I've become a was? late twitcher, but I'm, I'm certainly not up to the standard of Franny Kelly. But uh, so I'm not sure. I've okay. got I've got to admit defeat on that. All to right. be fair, if you just said a bird with confidence, we'd all probably nod sagely and rubber chins. Oh, are you like the uh, are you like the Butch Harmon? <laughs> I think Peter Ustaus on the golf commentary used to say, "Which which sort of bird is that? Which make a bird is that?" And he used to say, "Look." Peter, you know me, there's just birds, fish and animals. I don't get any more specific than that. Uh, Before we go, chaps, let's have a look at the Beecher Chase, which takes place at Aintree on Saturday. Nick Watts, while Paddy thrashes around for a show of betting, give us your idea of the early winner. Uh, I hope Fergal O'Brien runs Alvarado. I know he's an old boy, but um, old boys do well in this race. Sam will know that, because Hello Bud won it as a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. We've had Oscar Time winning it at 13. Uh, a few years ago, so I think experience of these fences seems to be a plus these days. Alvarado's finished fourth in two Grand Nationals. Good comeback run at Cheltenham behind Vicante de Noye. He's got to run well. Do you get a little bit nostalgic there when you hear the name Hello Bud, Sam? Oh, yeah, so it brings us well back. Um, absolute superstar of all of us. will always have fond memories of the beach, that's for sure. There's pictures of them all around the bedroom, so um, it's a race I'll never be able to forget. Excellent. And who might win the beach you chose, or have you not had a look? To be honest, I, I love the kind of the fairy tales, the top stories, you know, that Henry Brook coming back from injury, um, the way Highland Willows went last year and so on. Um, I'd love to think he, he could do the business again, but at the same time, I'm not sure what Paul's going to run it, but I'd always take interest at the end of the day. He gets sources very fit, they're very well schooled, and whatever he runs in the beach, you're like, you always run well. OK, let's conclude with Paddy Power gives him a show of betting on the beach and his selection. OK, so we're 10 to 1 each of two. Joint favourite, The Last Samurai and Uccello Conti. Then you got uh, 12 to 1, The Young Master and Three Faces West and Vieux Lyon Rouge. And then 14 to 1, Vicomte de Noye. Um, where else? Who else? 14. Size and Cole, Alvarado, Saint Air, Shut the Front Door. Loads of them. Give us a winner. 14s. I think the Vicant, uh, um, Vicant de Noye, uh, because of the Manello Rocco form from Cheltenham from the... Oh, the, yeah, sorry, yeah, this yeah. is your theory, you know I mean? isn't it? This yeah. is my theory, so this is like the baddie, well, it's not a baddie trade double at all, but it's kind of, if that form line is really good, you could do him in an each-way double with uh, Manello Rocco for the Gold Cup. There you go. That's Excellent. not optimistic at all. That is a very, very <laughs> optimistic way to end. Nick, thank you for your expertise. Paddy, thank you very much. And Pleasure. Sam, thank you so much. It's really been really great to hear from you. Fingers crossed that everything goes well on Wednesday and beyond. Hope things go well for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, all the best. Thank you very much for listening. We're back with the weekend preview postcast on Friday. And don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes. The Race and Postcast in association with Paddy Power. They prize support UK and Irish racing the night before.